If you wanted to create a world-class system of education, affordable, accessible, world-class in quality, that could meet the aspiring demands of now, what we thought at that time, UNESCO talked about 100 million, Mariana is talking about 100 million instructors, let alone students. And I think she's much closer to the, the fact, how would you do it? And the audience was spellbound with silence. <laughs> how would you do it? <laughs> We're struggling to get enough money for our existing institutions. We're turning away uh, 1,000 students for every applicant. We're not able to keep faculty. Even in India, where the top universities, they have 40% faculty vacancy rates. How will you multiply this system uh, almost exponentially? Uh, how is it possible? And we continued pestering our, our colleagues in future conferences with the same question to see what they would come up with. Uh, I think we're coming much closer to having the right answer to that. It's obviously not an answer. It's obviously not a wiping away hundreds of years of the development of educational institutions, but it's also obviously not incremental changes in the existing mode of way we're doing things. And what I appreciated so much from all your presentations was the points, the nodal points at which you touched and said something has to break, something has to change here. And Ralph gave the word, which really, we need disruption. In fact, we not only need it, we're going to get it whether we want it or not. Uh, we're working in colleagues in the, uh, the World Academy on the financial system, uh, an area where Mariana is very active. Uh, financial disruption is almost undermining the principal role of, of traditional banks in, in many ways that was unimagined a few years ago. Now, uh, Visa and uh, MasterCard are pleading for su support from the US, protection for the US government against the pay systems, the, the pay phone, uh, uh, the mobile phone pay systems improvised by India because it's permeating all over the world like lightning at a very low cost and disrupting a model that's been there for 50 years. I remember back in, uh, in 2013 when we were talking about this, uh, the only thing that could come to mind is when Barnes & Noble was the largest bookseller in the world and they had a thousand superstores all over the US and along came the internet, uh, I could imagine from their actions, what they thought. This is great. Now we have a great opportunity because we can reach out and advertise our product to around the country. Uh, and then they can order, come in into our stores and everything. And then along came somebody we never heard of and a company we never heard of uh, called Amazon. And he says, I don't need a bookstore <laughs> to become the biggest bookseller in the world. And now we don't even think of him as a bookseller. We think of them as a platform. I think the kind of ideas that we've been hearing, like from Pavel about learning ecosystems, uh, uh, the, the points that Ralph made about uh, the, the break with certification, the interesting points he made about regulation is a, is a, we know why regulation is there and how it helped the development, but we also see that it's stopping progress on innovation at critical areas. And universities are dropping the model of being regulated. They're looking for alternatives. They're creating alternatives. It's happening already. It's not just something for the future. So that I think with a breakup of the monopoly on certification and regulation, whether it's done by the universities or done by governments like in India, uh, we see in our friends here and who run institutions how it's stifling the capacity of the system to adapt. I think we're going to see, I think all of these points that you've raised are true. What our task, our challenge is uh, to recognize the value and inevitability of these changes and ask ourselves, what can we do to accelerate them, to 
generate the positive outcomes we want to anticipate the negative offshoots, which are there whenever there's a radical departure from the past and we break out of the existing structures. That's the challenge. This is the first of our five meetings where, and I, I'm, I'm saying this to thank you, where I really felt the focus was really on how do we go beyond this? Let's not talk about the problem. Uh, we know it's coming and it's gonna come in many different ways. And to me, this is what the consortium is all about, what the Academy is dedicated to. And we welcome all the colleagues, partners, networks uh, who can help us formulate uh, and be a catalyst to accelerate this change. Because as I tried to say in the opening session, it's critically tied to every single issue that we're trying to address today. <laughs> Whether it's nuclear weapons and climate change, or as Zbig talked about global citizenship, which we will be coming to, uh, or personality development and entrepreneur, it, it's, it's inseparable. That's not a separate field, it's a key instrument. So thank you for doing it, your job so wonderfully and making mine so easy. <laughs>